If you've been to the grocery store lately and you've noticed some empty shelves, you're probably not the only one because I have definitely noticed some empty shelves here and there when I've been as well. So it started making me think about why this has been going on. It feels like it's been going on for a while and that it's starting to get worse. Have you noticed that also? If so, let me know down below where you live, where you're from and uh, what the store shelves look by you because I'm pretty sure it's a little bit different, definitely based on where you live. So I've been researching this topic and also going to my own stores to take a look, see, see what's empty, see what's there, see what's available to purchase and what isn't and why this might be happening in the first place. So if you've been going to the store and wondering what in the world is going on with these empty shelves, why are these prices going up so much, hook me up with a thumbs up for the algorithm and let's get started onto some of the things that I found. Let's start at the store level and work out from there. First of all, grocery stores, big stores like Walmart will carry a certain number of a product. For example, let's use canned chicken noodle soup. Let's say your standard grocery store slash Walmart Target, things like that, will carry 300 cans of canned chicken noodle soup, 300. Sounds like a lot, like what they have out and then what they have in the back. Let's say there is some sort of illness hitting the people and people are nervous. They're thinking they might get sick. Maybe other people are gonna be stocking up. Let's say there's a hurricane coming, a storm coming. You won't be able to get to the grocery store. There's a ton of reasons why people might go to the store and stock up on a particular item. And canned soup is an easy one. It's easy to heat up. You don't really have to do anything to it. it tastes pretty good. Let's assume 60 people go to the store and pick up five cans of soup each. Five cans of soup is not that big of a deal. That, that would be like a normal grocery shopping trip for a lot of people. 60 people is actually not that much if you think about the course of a day of people shopping at the store. Well, that's 300 cans of soup and now the chicken noodle soup is gone. And that's just one item and that's just 60 people picking up a few things. Now let's take a hundred people and they all want bottled water for the incoming hurricane or tornado and they all go pick up two cases of water each. Again, not a huge amount of product to stock up on for your house for an emergency. Two cases of family, not that big of a deal. But you do that for a hundred people, that's 200 cases of water. How many stores carry 400 cases of water? Even a Sam's Club or a Costco is going to run out very, very quickly. So let's move on to another aspect of maybe why the shelves stay empty. You need workers to restock the shelves. The store gets a shipment, there's stuff in the back, they need to restock the shelves. Now, I don't know about you, but in my area, there is hiring, help needed signs in every single business across the town. I know people are having a hard time finding workers and that includes people to restock the shelves. So maybe they have the product, but not enough workers to get the product out there for us to go purchase. And there's a ton of factors that go into that between people being sick, uh, people demanding more pay and not going to work for those reasons, uh, a whole, whole bunch of variables that go into that. But that is also an issue why they can't stock the shelves. Another issue is that they've taken all their workers that they've had and they've moved them into online ordering, online pickups and things like that. So they need to hire additional people and there isn't the workforce for those jobs. Maybe it's not competitive enough in price. I have a great example of that. There is a bike shop distribution plant and an Amazon, <laughs> distribution center opened up right next door and all the workers went over to Amazon. The bike shop literally has no warehouse workers because they all moved somewhere else. So that sort of thing could also be happening. I think now's a great time to tell you about an online grocery store that you can get some pantry essentials if you are having a hard time finding the products in your stores that you would like to have at your house. I've been using Thrive Market for over a year now and I love it. They have a huge variety of pantry staples, specialty ingredients. If you're on a special diet and you want to expand the things that you're eating, tons of variety. You can sort through the app just by 
your diet or lifestyle preferences. You can sort by sale items, which is one of my favorite ways to do it. It is a membership based online grocery store. You can do month to month or you can do the annual membership. I highly recommend the annual because it comes to only $5 a month. And if you try it and you decide you don't like it for whatever reason, doesn't matter the reason, they will refund all of your money within the first 30 days. So it is truly no risk to you. And are they going to give you an awesome deal for clicking through the first link down in the doobly-doo. Yes, they are. It is 25% off your first order and a free gift. Your free gift is gonna be uh, one of these things right here. Basically, almost everything I've tried at Thrive Market is amazing. They get to my house in two days from my order and I live in the middle of nowhere, so it's really fast. But here are some of the things I love. This extra virgin olive oil is so so delicious. I keep it by my stove all the time. And I do love the avocado spray as well. The smoky chipotle salsa, the flavors are amazing. They are spot on. It's only a couple bucks for this jar. I probably have six of these <laughs> right now because heaven forbid I run out. If you're into any kind of specialty diet, I find that their keto mixes are cheaper than my grocery stores that I can pick up. Usually my grocery stores have these for about $10, $11. Stuff on Thrive Market goes on sale all the time. So I think this one was recently six, which is a huge price cut. I love my coconut. So I love to pick up things like this as well. And I love their Primal Palette spices. This steak seasoning one is money. Their spices are a touch on the expensive side. They are, as are a lot of specialty spices, but the Primal Palette ones are worth their weight in gold. These are delicious. Anyway, they have all of your basics, flour, rice, beans, pasta, pasta sauces. You wanna check them out? Go to thrivemarket.com slash frugalfitmom, link down below, save 25% off, get a free gift, and then you won't have to worry about going to the grocery stores at all. <laughs> Let's go back to some more reasons your grocery stores might have empty shelves. Our entire country in the United States, and I would imagine in most of the world, is run by the trucking industry. Those big old semis you see on the highway, they are bringing your grocery store all of the things. If you want chocolate chips at your grocery store, the trucks are bringing it in. If there's a problem with the trucking industry, and there is right now, there's not gonna be as many things coming to your store. Here are some of the reasons the trucking industry is struggling. Number one, there has been reduced CDL training and certification during the pandemic. They just weren't doing it as much. So uh, you have fewer truckers. Number two, there was a lot of competition from other industries like construction, warehousing are all hiring people. Uh, so maybe the truckers don't wanna be on the road anymore. Trucking is a very difficult job. Uh, you drive for a really long time by yourself all the time on the road. And so maybe they wanted to shift into something else. Number three, positive drug and alcohol testing sidelined 64,000 truckers. That is a huge amount of trucks not driving. And what the trucking industry says is the number one reason the generous unemployment payouts. So they did a study, average trucker salaries versus truckers on unemployment was within $5,000 a year. They were very, very close. So of course they were saying that why would they come do this really difficult job if they didn't have to and made basically the same amount of money. So they're having a hard time getting their truckers to come back right now. Any studies or articles that I reference in this video, I will leave all those down below so you can go check them out if you would like to do that later. So they are expecting uh, all of the truckers to come back uh, once everything calms down, but they're having a hard time recruiting at the moment. Less trucks equals less food on the shelves, which equals lower supply with the same demand. And now we are on Econ 101. Less supply with a higher demand equals, you guessed it, higher prices for you and for me. Trucking is part of the supply chain issue that we are having globally. The entire globe runs on boats. We import and export everything. 90% of the world's trade is run on boats. So between lack of raw materials, lack of people working, people getting sick, natural disasters happening, uh, blockages of certain passageways for the ships in general, no workers to unload the boats onto the trucks, no truckers to drive the goods to the store, no stockers to stock what's from the truck onto the shelves, and some people starting to panic buy a little bit equals a whole lot of problems for all of us. <laughs> 
Hopefully I've covered some of the points which explain why you are seeing what you are seeing. Now, what in the world are we going to do about it? We can be a little bit creative in our shopping and food consumption. They're saying the things that have the biggest impact right now are aluminum cans, soda of all things, frozen convenience foods. Maybe we start to avoid those items and we start picking up I'm not gonna say stockpile. I'm gonna say let's buy a couple of extra every time we go just in case. They have a hard time getting in rice or getting in Kool-Aid or bread or fill in the blank with whatever it is that you wanna buy. I have heard this time around we're not gonna have issues with toilet paper, so that's good. But people are buying up bottled water. That is still an issue and a lot of the stores I've seen have given limits on bottled water and I do wanna tell you this, if you see this soda, go buy it. You will not regret it. <laughs> I have the hardest time finding this soda. So when I see it, I, I have to buy it. Even though sometimes I try not to drink soda, this is the most delicious soda ever created. And if you haven't given this video a thumbs up yet, hit it right now for the Dr. Pepper. Here's some other things. A lot of people will go to the big box stores. They'll go to the Costco, they'll go to the Sam's Club, they'll hit up the Walmart, they'll go to the Super Target, but they will forget about the more expensive grocery stores, which I have not seen any empty shelves at all. Like chain grocery stores that are not a big box warehouse type of a store. No empty shelves, no limits. So check those out as well. Don't forget about your Dollar Trees. Don't forget about your general stores, farmer's markets. You can garden if you have a little bit of space in pots and things like that. If you live in a warmer climate than me, you'll do a lot better at gardening than I do. And let's start thinking about being prepared for if the shelves truly do become empty because of all of these issues that I have laid out. Now, that being said, please do not go absolutely bananas and buy a whole bunch of stuff that you're not gonna eat, that's gonna go to waste, and you don't know how to use. Be cautious about what you're buying. Buy things that you will actually eat. Maybe it's just a couple boxes of pasta and a couple jars of sauce. Maybe it's your canned chicken noodle soup. Is it weird that I like the bean with bacon soup? That's probably my favorite canned soup, and I don't generally like canned soup, honestly. But you don't need to buy 30 of them. You know, get three, and the next week get three more, and the next week get three more. And before you know it, you actually have a stockpile of food just in case you can't go to the store and get that product. And of course, you can order food online with a place like Thrive Market. I have bought so many of their sauces, flours, and all kinds of rices and pastas for really competitive prices, honestly. Here's my last reason that your stores might be empty. Uh, I live in a college town. The day that you're watching this video, the students come back in two days for fall semester. In our area that we don't have dorms, it's all apartments with kitchens, so they all cook. All the locals know to go to Walmart by today. <laughs> and then don't go back for two weeks because I can guarantee if I take my camera in after the college students come back, there will be aisles and aisles and aisles of food missing. And I can tell you what they are after watching it for eight years, peanut butter, ramen, cereal, frozen pizzas, milk and eggs will all be empty for at least two weeks, which is another reason your store shelves could be empty. Tourist season, college is starting, things like that. I hope I answered some of your questions as to why the store shelves could be empty right now. Let me know what yours look like in your area. Like tell me where you live and what your store shelves look like. I can still find basically everything I need, just not at Walmart. But if I go to any other store, I can definitely find what I need. And then of course I always do my order from Thrive Market, but they're gonna give you guys a free gift and 25% off your first order if you go to thrivemarket.com slash frugalfitmom. So first link in the doobly-doo, go check it out. Thanks to them for partnering with me today. By the way, they, I think they only ship to US. So my international people, unfortunately, uh, they don't ship outside the US right now, which is a bummer. But thanks for hanging out with me. If you're interested in seeing my food storage tour, I'm planning on recording that in the next week. So let me know if that sort of thing is interesting to you. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And because you guys were awesome enough to hang out until the end, I'm gonna leave you a little bonus footage, like right here. We have another snack box. This one is from Switzerland and there was a letter with, oh good, it's here. I am gonna mess up your name. Is it Kiara? Kiara, Kiara. Kier, Kiara. I hope I'm even close a little bit. Okay, I've made it back to the US and I'm able to send some Swiss treats. I hope you and your family enjoy the treats and that they made it in one piece. 
Come to Switzerland and I'll show you around. I would love to. <laughs> I have a secret. I may have eaten some of the chocolate in this box already. <laughs> I'm leaving. I can't work under these conditions, mom. I stayed up late reading and I needed a reading snack. It was, it basically looked like chocolate wafer cookies covered in chocolate is what it looked like. But she says it's a famous and well-loved Swiss cookie made of wafers sandwiched between chocolate and covered in more Swiss chocolate. But can I just say, holy crap. The wafer was like the softest wafer I've ever tasted. And the chocolate was so luscious, but the whole thing felt like light and airy. It was spectacular and I ate them all. Did wow. you finish it? Yeah, they were awesome. Oh my gosh. They were awesome. Okay, so first of all, I have a Swiss bag. Look, I'm legit. It's my new grocery shopping bag. Totally Although I can now. only fit like one head of lettuce in there, but I still like <laughs> it. So there's a few things in here. I think we have to start with this bag of something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Looks no. like taters. Paprika, paprika, chips. Sweet. Yeah, sweet. I like chips. I like chips too. I love it. Is that loud and annoying? Oh, I feel just gonna <laughs> in my face. Yeah, give that a little. Oh, they look like barbecue chips. Do they taste like barbecue chips? A little bit. Mmm. Yeah, those are good. Not as strong it's as subtle. ours. It's very subtle, and I like it. Oh, I'm gonna eat this, this whole thing. Solid choice. This little fun bag of all kinds of goodness. This is a Kinder Chocobon. Chocobon. Yeah. I've had a Kinder before. So this is just chocolate. Good. It's got to be chocolate, right? It looks like a root beer barrel, but I don't think that's what it is. Yeah, I don't think that's what it is either. Is there stuff inside? Oh, <gasps> there is. What is it? Can't tell. It reminds me of an Easter candy. That is very rich in a good way. The Kinder Bon is a chocolate bonbon filled with a milk and hazelnut filling, technically German. I like it. I like it. And then I have these mini branch. That is not how you pronounce that. <laughs> branch. Branch. Brains. <laughs> <laughs> Choc Chocolate ole. They're the same, but why are they red and green? Why are they different colors? Christmas. Oh, yellow. And this one's blue. Why? Blue. Why are they different? Blue. Okay, I'm gonna do green. In case you can't tell, I like blue. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like there's something crunchy in it. Oh, it looks like a roll of crunch bar. That's not what it that's tastes like. That's not what that is. <laughs> oh, that's really good. Again, very rich. Super rich. It's almost like there's little bits of hazelnut on the outside, but not on the inside. That is milled chocolate. Dude. I think they're all the same. I think the colors are just the wrapping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Snack me. Brian Tudson. What? <laughs> I don't know what the hyphen on the A is. Uh, that's not even a hyphen. It no, it's a dot. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's even a hyphen. <laughs> In Switzerland, when they're talking, they okay. do this when they Does this? Brooken presses. <laughs> Let me press here. There's a target. Ah! I got it. That's so cool. I got it. There's a target and it's... Uh, why don't have we... Why, okay, what? <laughs> what? Why don't we have things like that? All right, they're weird. You're scaring me. Wait, is it a star? Um, It's more like a shell. The thing is, I can't read any of this, so I don't know what it is. Wait, wait. Whoa! Wait. They're like a cookie. This tastes like something I'd have at Christmas. Chocolate? No, no, no. <laughs> That's a cookie. No, it's a cookie. Oh, biscuit. Yeah, it's a biscuit. Well, that's what they call cookies over there. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's three chocolate bars. She says, I know you can get the lint in America, but it is not the same. This one is made in Switzerland. Less sugar and less preservatives. It's real Swiss chocolate made from happy Swiss cows. <laughs> I love dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. Is it fry or fray? Does it look like I'm from Switzerland? I don't know. <laughs> Milk chocolate with hazelnuts. Because I have had, whoa, where did my voice go first? I've had. <laughs> I have had. My voice? That would be absolutely not talking. <laughs> okay, um, Come I cannot. Come with me and, and you'll be. In a world of pure imagination. That looks so good. That is so good. In a world. <laughs> good. Why is that so good? It's chocolate that's so dark. It's 10% cacao and 90% the dirt that beans were grown in. 
Nice temper on that chocolate. I can hear it. <laughs> guys, you laugh by me, guys. You ever see Zuko's Just Desserts? No. Zumo. Zu Zubo. Zupo. <laughs> What's his name? Zumbo, you uncultured <laughs> slime. Zumbo. That is not better. That is really good. <laughs> like, do you hear that? Yeah, I like the milk chocolate better. Yes, that is your preference. That one's for you. Per 100 grams. There's 537 calories. Oh, the whole bar is 100 grams. Okay, the whole bar. Oh, okay, I thought I meant like. And it's 500, just 537 it's 500 calories. 500 calories. Here it is, here it is. No. No, you can't. There must be another way. <laughs> Not a money. You. Turn to page 394. Wow, we were really annoying. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so good. I don't even need to let that sit. It may have melted on my leg a little. <laughs> like she said in the note, we do have lint bars here. Mm -hmm. They don't taste anything like that. No, those are not the same. It Emphasis how? not. It's coating my mouth in such how? a way that it you doesn't It doesn't go away. It's like, it's gone, but there's still chocolate there. Oh yeah. So do people in Switzerland uh, like uh -huh. always have the taste of chocolate in their mouth? Because that is probably why they're happy. Let's move there. Mm, I like it. It is superior to... To There's the American. money. If any of my viewers live in Switzerland and you want to send me chocolate, I will not send it back. That's the truth. I think the best chocolate we've tried so far is Switzerland and then Scotland. Right? Was it Scotland? That had like yeah. the arrow. I will never eat a Hershey's bar for the rest of my life. Thank you wow. so much for sending this box. Oh, like, what? Are you listening to my stomach? <laughs> my stomachs. <laughs> my stomach is, is making noises of happiness. They're in sync. Okay, we I gotta go. Any I have no friends. Okay, we gotta go. Bye. 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 Mm. <laughs> Christine out.